So today marks our final uh, sermon in the sermon series on the book of Ruth. And how appropriate that the book of Ruth this morning in chapter 4, as we heard from John, ed ends with an ending akin to, and they lived happily ever after, right? Before we talk about that, let's look at uh, what has happened since we left off last week. Last week, uh, Naomi encouraged Ruth to go and see Boaz, uh, to lay at his feet, and to basically offer himself to her so that she would have security uh, from a kinsman redeemer, which they believe Boaz to be. Um, and Boaz said to her, there's another one in line first that I need to speak to, and give me the day, and I'll take a look at that. And that's where we left off. So we had no idea where it was going to go from there. Uh, but then we come into the story today, and we find that Boaz was true to his word. The very next day, the first thing he did was went to the gates of the town and waited, and he gathered uh, 10 other uh, elders from the town around him, and he waited for the true kinsman redeemer to come to offer to him the opportunity for both property and for the marriage with Ruth. He chose not to go that route. So it was left to Boaz to step up and be the kinsman redeemer, to allow, Boaz, to allow um, Ruth to become his wife and to be able to care for Ruth and Naomi. This truly was a fairy tale ending because Boaz marries Ruth. They have a son named Obed, and Obed in Hebrew means servant or to serve. Naomi, the mother-in-law, her future is secure and her family is restored. If we remember from the beginning of the story, all that was lost. Ruth's faithfulness and love for Naomi has all led to this. Obed goes on to be the father of Jesse and the grandfather of David, and we know by the genealogy in Matthew that uh, Jesus is in the line of David. So if you take a look at it, all from Ruth's faithfulness, all the way through, not only is Naomi blessed and um, Boaz blessed, but along the line comes King David, and along the line comes Jesus as well. So let's review how we got here. And what we learn from this story for us, what is it that we can take away from this story of Ruth that could be a blessing for us and for others. So at the beginning of the story, we have a great famine that causes Naomi and her family to leave their home in Bethlehem, her husband and her sons, and go to the land of Moab. And while in the land of Moab, her sons do find wives, but both her husband and her sons perish over the course of that time. So what do we learn from that? Basically, life sometimes can inhale greatly. I say that instead of sucks with my youth all the time, so it's inhale greatly. And it can throw us curveballs that can literally knock us off of our feet. But the lesson in this is that God doesn't leave us alone. How many of us have experienced things where our lives have been shaken by experiences that we've had? Has anyone not had that experience? That would be a blessing. I, I don't know about you. I've had more than my share. But the big lesson from this is that God didn't leave them alone. God didn't leave them alone. In the story next, Ruth, Ruth and Orpah, Naomi's daughter, daughter-in-laws, have to make a decision about whether they're going to stay with Naomi or if they're going to leave her. Orpah from the urging of Naomi, chooses to stay in Moab and go back to her family. But Ruth chooses to stay with Naomi and migrate with her to Bethlehem, a foreign land, a land with different people, with a different religion. Uh, she chooses to do this. So once again, this is evidence that God does not leave us alone. And also that God can use us and others to provide comfort, grace, love, support, and compassion in the lives of others. And that's what we see from what Ruth has chosen to do. And no, notice that I said that Ruth chose to stay with Naomi. 
This is an extremely important uh, lesson for us about being faithful. Faithfully doing something means doing it with love and conviction. Ruth was not martyring herself to stay with Naomi. She did it out of love and she did it out of compassion. Remember her words to Naomi early on. She said, where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, your God, my God. What an amazing lesson is this. When God calls us to do something, we do it willingly, we do it with everything we've got, and we do it with love, right? Sometimes in the life of things in the church, people take on responsibilities not out of love, not out of feeling that God has called them, but out of a feeling of martyring themselves. Well, if I don't do it, nobody else will do it. And they go into it with an attitude and a, a spirit that is negative. And it hurts them, and it hurts the ministry that they're involved with, and it hurts everything around them. It's not about saying, hey, look at me and all the things that I'm doing to keep things going. It's saying, hey, look at me, a disciple of Christ, doing things out of the love of God. And thanks be to God that I get to do this. We learn that from Ruth. We learn that when she tells Naomi once again, where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your God will be my God. Your people, my people. She's giving everything into it because of the love and the compassion that God has given her for Naomi. That's an important lesson for all of us to remember. So next... Naomi, in turn, is faithful to Ruth. She uses her knowledge and her connections in her homeland to secure a future for both of them. When we are at our best as disciples of Christ, we find ways to use our knowledge, to use our connections, to use our skills and our gifts to help others. Some examples, getting involved with mission projects and mission help projects for people in the community, people beyond our community, people right here in our church. I know in the past we've had moving teams where someone had to move from one place to another and we find people with pickup trucks and we put a team together and we go and we move them from one place to another so that they don't incur the expense of having to pay for someone to do that. The food collection that we do in the, in the back where we collect foods for the local food pantry all the Thanksgiving bags that have come in over the course of the past several weeks so that we could care for people in the community as well. Clothing and gifts for others in need when we, when we make collections, both through the Thrifty Penny and through the church and everything else to be able to provide for the needs of families at Thanksgiving, Christmas, and other times throughout the year are tremendous blessings in ways that we use our knowledge and our connections uh, to be able to secure a future for other people. Um, teaching and mentoring others, sharing our time, our energy and life with someone else benefits both them and us. See, it wouldn't have been the same if Ruth said, Ruth said well, I'll be here in Moab and I'll send you cards. And every once in a while when I have a little something extra, I'll send it to you up in Bethlehem. There would not have been the same blessing occur for Naomi or for Ruth if that were to be the case. Ruth would have, I mean, Naomi still would have been trying to figure out how she was going to collect food and have a place to stay and everything else because she didn't have a kinsman redeemer to take care of her. That wasn't in the cards. Ruth had to come alongside of her and journey with her and walk her hand in hand through this entire journey for the blessing to take place. We do that too. When you step up as a Sunday school teacher or become a mentor for a child through confirmation or become a, a youth leader or see another person in the church that just needs someone to hold their hand through a difficult life situation and everything else, we use what we have. We use our knowledge. We use our connections. We use our gifts and our skills to make a difference in the lives of someone else. And we find ourselves being blessed in the process as well. So next, Boaz comes onto the scene, and Boaz offers mercy, he offers charity and love, even though not truly obligated to do so. As disciples, these qualities are a hallmark of who we are, and we need to be careful not to miss opportunities to offer them 
when we see the when we see the issue as something that is not our problem how often are the things that we get involved with our issues or our problems in the church many times they're not they're someone else's but if we fail to get involved we're not extending love charity and mercy to others correct to quote Jacob Marley from a Christmas Carol mankind is our business correct so as disciples that is what we do we get involved we come alongside of others we share mercy charity and love with others even when we're not obligated to do so because that is what God calls us to do so in the end of this whole story of Ruth all is restored the land is plentiful there is no famine anymore family is restored for both Ruth and Naomi Boaz has a wife and child in his older age, and the lineage of both King David and Jesus is established. What a happy ending. Happy endings, though, though not ever guaranteed, do not only take place in fairy tales. They happen when ordinary people faithfully respond to God's call to act lovingly and with compassion in the lives and affairs of others. In the Asbury commentary for the, the book of Ruth in, the chapter, in chapter 4, it closes its comments about this chapter by saying, Yahweh's purpose had been accomplished through the lives of ordinary but faithful individuals. A life committed to God's service meets no insignificant turns. All of life, all of life becomes sacred. So what do we learn from this? In other words, each of our lives matter. You matter in this world. What we each do matters. How we live and love matters, both for us and for others. You matter. You have the ability through God calling you, using you, to be a, a voice of compassion, to be a person of mercy and love and mission and service in the world. Something you do through your life can and will make a difference in the lives of someone else, but you have to remember that in God, your life matters. You are a gift that God has put onto this earth to make a difference, not just in your life, but in the life of others, correct? But you have to be able to look in the mirror and say, I matter, because in God's eyes, you do. And if you fail to realize that you matter, then you won't be able to have that blessing for others. And in turn, you won't receive the blessing back that God has in store for you for being a blessing. As we enter into the season of Thanksgiving, let's remember this. Remember all that we have to be thankful for. Thank God for all of the ways for which you and your family have been blessed. Then find a way to be blessed, to be a blessing to someone else. You may be the one God is calling to help someone else, and you encounter a blessed and happy ending to a painful chapter in their lives. Maybe it's you that's going to walk someone through a difficult time and help them to uh, find completion out of whatever the situation is that they're going to. Maybe you can do that, and all it takes is holding their hand, being there, and loving them in the process. Jesus said, they will know you are my disciples if you have love for one another. They will know you're my disciples if you have love for one another. You matter. You matter to God. You matter to your community, your family, your world. You matter. And when you live into that and you act lovingly and with mercy and with charity in the world, the lives of people are changed. Every time I watch the news, I'm reminded of that, of how much more love is needed in our communities, in our countries, in our world. Imagine if all of us realized that our lives matter to make a difference in the lives of others, how different the world might look. And where does it begin? It begins with you and me. It begins with you and me. It's a one person at a time thing. And as we extend compassion, the baton passes. But we have to remember that as disciples, we are called to love one another. So today, as you enter into Thanksgiving and the holiday season, I dare you to act. 
and I dare you to love. Because I think in the process, you're going to see God blessing in amazing ways like you've never seen before. Amen? Amen.